my loves, it's Monica and welcome back to the start of a new cozy reading vlog. I am so excited. I am home for the holidays. I'm in Pennsylvania. I left New York City a couple of days ago and it's been nice being back and it's so lovely today. I'm like not even having to wear a jacket. I'm on a little bit of a walk outside right now but I'm about to head inside and cozy on up with a book. I have lots of plans for tonight. I have a couple of books that I'm really excited to dive into that I've just been wanting to read for a while. They're both very like one is like supposed to be gothic and the other one is dark academia i'll talk about them in a bit but i'm super excited for both of them i just feel like that sort of vibe is very much what i'm looking for this winter just like sort of like candlelight books you know so i've got that and then i have a crochet project i want to get to i've been wanting to make this like cute like coquette crochet bag so i'm gonna start that and then i also have christmas presents to wrap so that I'd bring you along tonight as I accomplish all of these things. I'm gonna head inside and I think make some tea. It's like 4 or 5 p.m. right now. So I'm gonna head inside, make some tea, and get cracking. Hello, so I've got my tea. I'm feeling very cozy and yeah, so I thought I'd talk a bit about the books that I'm reading. And also, oh my gosh, I forgot to mention this at the intro, but there's also a game that has just come out. It's called Palia. And I've been waiting for this game to come out on Nintendo Switch for so long, and I just downloaded it onto my Switch. And I'm so excited to play it. Yes, I'm hoping to play that during this vlog also, and I can let you know my initial thoughts. Um, let me know if you play at all, because I'm just so excited for it. But um, these are the two books that I'm hoping to read over the course of this vlog. The first one is Down Comes the Night by Allison Saft, which has been on my TBR for years, like since this book came out. It's supposed to be like a gothic, historical, magical kind of vibe is the what I gather from it. So in this book, we follow Wren Sutherland, who has been dispatched from the Queen's army and she ends up taking up this position to try and cure this man's mysterious illness. Um, but she finds out that this man that she's trying to cure is actually like the sworn enemy of her kingdom. And so of course we got some enemies to lovers vibes. I believe that the like setting of this place is at this very like moody atmospheric manner which I love. So yeah, we've got all the gothic-y, romantic, angsty vibes in this book, hopefully. And then I'm also hoping to read If We Were Villains by M.L. Rio. And this is another one I've had on my TBR for ages. This book gets compared a lot to The Secret History, which is one of my all-time favorite books. But this one is about like these Shakespearean actors who are all attending this conservatory specifically for Shakespeare. And this one is meant to have lots of dark academia vibes, which I'm also just so in the mood for right now. I feel like these two books just feel very winter to me, so I'm excited for both of these. And then I will be playing some Palia, and also, of course, working on my crochet project, hopefully, if I can get some time for it today, because I would love to get a decent start into it. I guess I'll go ahead and start off reading. I kind of want to start with Down Comes the Night. So I'm going to kick off reading this one and I'll let you know how that goes. about 30 pages into Down Comes the Night and what I'll say is that this book really does kind of throw you right into the middle of things. It almost feels like we're getting thrown in like partway through a book like we follow Ren and Una and they're in a forest and they've captured someone and we know that there's like all this baggage and backstory between these characters but we're sort of just getting if I'm being honest, like info dumped a lot of that info. And I feel like I'm meant to feel more attached or like I'm meant to feel more for these characters than I currently am. Like right now I kind of, 
I don't really care about either of them and they're both kind of frustrating me in different ways without that sort of like attachment to the characters where like I actually care about what happens to them. Um, it almost feels like there was like an extra hundred pages or something like before the beginning of the book that sort of built this relationship out a bit deeper before the like actual start of the book. I don't know maybe there's just it, that might be something that like comes later on too like in flashbacks but as of right now I like I can tell that these are two characters who care very deeply for each other. I believe like have a romantic connection between Una and Ren, which I think is awesome. I love that we have this like bi main character as the heroine of this novel, but I just like don't feel any sort of connection between her and Una, if I'm being so honest, like there's no chemistry. And I also, I don't really feel like she's really upset about one of her friends who was kidnapped. Um, and I just like, I don't feel anything for any of it. I don't know why, but I am liking the setting and the writing. So it's like kind of a conflicting feeling. I don't know. We'll see if that like maybe shifts as the book goes along. So it's been about another hour and I'm about 70 pages in and I am liking it more. I will say that I do definitely still feel like pretty detached from the characters like Una and Ren. I just like don't really feel anything there for, uh, as far as their relationship is concerned. Other than that, I do really like the world and I like the writing of the story itself. Um, I think it's really interesting that we have these like three kingdoms. Two of them have magic, one doesn't, but the one that doesn't have magic seems to have like electricity and stuff, which I find really intriguing. And it also seems to be like that electricity isn't like common for the people in the, uh, these other kingdoms and that because these other kingdoms have magic they sort of have not advanced technologically versus this other kingdom that has advanced technologically but is weaker because it doesn't have magic so i just think that's interesting as far as the world building is concerned obviously i don't want to like give spoilers away so i'm not gonna go too much into detail from here on out about like everything but i am liking it so far but like it's a weird feeling because usually I feel like I will like a book, like I, I'll, I really like the characters and I'll feel like they have really good banter and stuff, but I struggle with a book's like pacing or plot and world building and I feel like it's almost the opposite here where I think the world building and the plot and all of that is like super well done and like the ambiance and everything but the characters and the dialogue are what's kind of lacking for me so I don't know we'll see if that continues especially as we meet more characters because maybe this is just like these sort of like beginning characters and as we get deeper in and we meet the love interest and stuff it'll evolve we'll see but yeah it's almost dinner time so I'm gonna go and help my mom with um some dinner and i think make another cup of tea because i just am in the mood for lots of tea today so i have the tea boiling if you can't hear it and i brought some bok choy back with me because i didn't want it to go bad while i was in uh, while i was away from new york and i'm gonna prepare it in the easiest and yummiest way which is literally just to pan fry it with chili crisp it's so good um and yeah it's just my mom and i tonight so we're kind of having just a bit of a mishmash of food, serving this, some Korean stuff. She made some kimchi soup, which I think will be very yummy. So I just finished dinner with my mom and I got a bit further into my book and I feel kind of mixed about it. So also I'm starting my crochet project, um, but I feel kind of mixed about it further in and we've met Hal, the like 
devilish guy or whatever. He's like, can kill people just by looking at them. And her or him and Ren have been sort of having um, interactions because she's trying to heal him. And my issue is that once again, there's like no chemistry. Like I just, I, I get the whole like forbidden love enemies thing. Cause like, I definitely, I understand that, but I kind of just feel like I'm being told that they have this like forbidden budding romance versus like actually seeing it if that makes sense but it's sad because like on paper i feel like i should love this it should be like so good so angsty but i just like i don't know i think it's also because like hal doesn't really have much of a personality to be so honest so i'm just like not really vibing with them right now i will say i definitely do feel the like setting of the house i feel like it definitely feels super atmospheric and um creepy especially like as they're walking through the house at night i'm like oh my gosh i'm so stressed so it's so it's such a weird feeling because like i feel like the plotting of it and the emotions of like the actual plot are hitting for me but like not the characters and not the relationships like none of the relationships feel interesting to me or feel compelling to me or angsty or is giving me anything but like the actual atmosphere of the book and the like plot of the story I am like invested in so I just feel like I don't know I can't decide how I feel about it but I am like pretty far into it actually I might finish it pretty soon I'm doing um while I'm crocheting I'm also doing the audiobook I switched over so that's how I'm getting through it a bit faster right now. I'm very proud of how far I've gotten. Look at my little puffs, they're so cute. Um, I always forget like how therapeutic, just like making something with your hands like this is for me, especially like to just sit in one place and crochet, listen to an audiobook. like that's just so restoring, I feel like for me personally, I just find it so grounding. I don't know I think it's like the tactile nature of it and it's hard because I'm definitely someone who I feel a lot of guilt when I'm not being productive and I'm trying to be better about that of like just letting myself do things for the joy of it I feel like I talk about this a lot it's like an ongoing issue with me for many years I'm trying to make my goals for the upcoming year and just like think about you know we're coming to the end of 2023 trying to think about what I want to do in 2024 and I think one of the things that I definitely want to try and prioritize is just like being kinder to myself in that capacity and along those lines like seeking out um more mental health resources and things I feel like that's something I care a lot about like men mental health resources and assistance is something that I believe should be easily accessible for all people um and it can be really difficult to find those resources and so that's something that I'm trying to just like prioritize and be better about in the new year and um, also just like be a better advocate for in the new year too because again I think that that's something that should exist for all people and I'm very lucky to live in New York City where there are a lot more resources but I know that that's definitely not the case everywhere so just trying to think about like ways to help with that but also like seek it out myself if that makes sense so I don't know just things I'm thinking about right now as we're going into a new year I also just like I think I'm gonna I, I remade a Goodreads account because I do miss it I've tried like all of the competitors and just like none of them hit the same way I don't know I've tried guys I don't know if I'm gonna make it public right now I just kind of have it for myself so that I can track my own reading and like my thoughts as I'm reading that I can use for um, videos so that I'm also just like not going into videos completely blind about like my feelings on a book like as I'm reading this book I'm adding notes into my Goodreads account um, which I think will be really helpful for me like in the future when I want to review this book in full you know also I don't know what that sound is it sounds like there's like fireworks going on outside which is odd it's not really a Christmas activity I feel like flying by look at all my little bubbles so it is quite a bit later in the evening and my mom has gone to bed and I have finished 
Down Comes the Night. And I liked it. Here's the thing. I feel so weird to, to reviewing this book because I, I think I mentioned this before in that as far as like the plot and the world, I think this book is so good to the point where I would 100% read other books by Alison Saft because this book has so much of what I really love in books. Like I love really evocative ambiance. I love, you know, settings that feel alive or feel like, like houses that feel like they're breathing. Like I love that kind of stuff. And this was a debut novel. So I just feel like we're starting from some really great stuff here. Um, even though I didn't love this one in particular, I just feel like for me, the characters across the board fell really flat and especially their relationships and their dialogue. I just really struggled to feel any sort of like urgency or connection between any of them, even to the point like the ending, which I won't spoil, but I liked the ending. I liked the ultimate conclusion of the ending, but I also like didn't really get it, especially like for those of you who have read it, the stuff of the queen. I was like, mm, okay, I guess. It just didn't feel earned for the entire book. I kind of felt similarly with Hal. Like I just felt like he as a character just felt very flat to me. It he just sort of it didn't really spark any real interest in me like I want to feel yearning when I'm reading a book like this and I didn't feel that yearning I will say that I did really like Ren's character arc by the end and I liked the sort of ideas that the author was exploring around like emotions and the way that we vilify emotions and things like that I, I liked that I, I thought that was really really well done so yeah uh, not my favorite book of all time but I could see this author becoming a favorite especially like with this being a debut, I'm super interested to see what future books are like and if I have the same issue. I kind of wish I had wanted to do this video and I, I think I'll still do it at some point where I read the first chapter of a bunch of books and like guess what my reaction to the overall book would be because this 100% when I think about like my reaction after the first chapter versus the end like I, I almost could have like written my review at the beginning like I already knew all of the issues that I was going to have with this book before I even like continued reading it Can you judge a book by its first chapter and in this case I kind of could like I kind of knew exactly what I how I was going to feel by the end like I knew it was going to be sort of like a three star read for me and it then it's what it ended up being so anyways, I don't know. I feel conflicted about it, but it's, it's okay. Um, and then, oh, I, I made some more progress in my crochet project. So this is as far as I am right now. And I think I need to do like two, maybe two more rows of these little like bobbly things. And then I should be good with the first half. So I'm making a bag. So I have to make two of these pieces and then I have to make the piece that goes around to like add some width to it and then I had to make the strap so honestly we're moving pretty quickly and all my presents are wrapped except for my mom's I'm gonna do that now and I think I'm gonna start listening to while I'm wrapping presents if we were villains by ML Rio which I'm super excited for I love the secret history it's one of my favorite books of all time and I've here's the thing I find it really interesting like the genre of dark academia because it's kind of become like genre fiction versus the secret history is definitely literary fiction and I have yet to come across another book that is under the dark academia umbrella that comes close at all to what the secret history was doing. I find it really interesting that this one literary fiction book has sort of created this whole genre fiction category of like mystery murder murder mystery novels that are like pretentious, purposefully pretentious and academic and very aesthetic forward, especially like looking at TikTok and things like Saltburn really popping off right now and the whole like old money trend. It's all definitely a bit interconnected, but I kind of feel like a lot of the themes of The Secret History gets a little bit lost on people sometimes um, because it's definitely not like meant to be taken as a romanticization of that it's quite the opposite actually all that to be said i love the secret history though like i love the vibe of it regardless of that and i am always excited to read 
stories that have been inspired by it but I also go into them with the understanding that it's not going to be the secret history it's not going to be lit fic it's going to be more like genre fiction it's going to be more it's going to be lighter even if in tone it's like dark it's it's not going to be that same type of vibe I am interested in reading Brideshead Revisited though because I have seen it brought up a lot with um Saltburn being really popular right now and I've never read it and I kind of feel like not that I think it has anything in common with the secret history at all but I kind of feel like I will like it in a similar way and I don't know why anyways this is such a tangent all all this to say I love the secret history I love dark academia and I'm super excited to start if we were villains I've heard very mixed things but yeah we'll see how I get along with it okay actually sorry I just read the first chapter and I do have to pop back in and say that these characters are legitimately just like citing off Shakespeare <laughs> which is so silly I maybe it's because I know people who are like pretentious about Shakespeare so I can't help but like envision them as I'm reading this honestly that might be it but I do like the writing so far and I am very compelled about what is happening and what has happened I ended up reading about a couple of chapters actually the whole like first act of um if we were villains sorry i forgot the title for a second read the entire first act of if we were in Vil if we were villains and i really 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 like it so far um i will say that it definitely like reads like a like popular fiction version of the secret history but i don't think that's a bad thing like compulsively readable it's really fun is does it have the same depth of character is it as complicated or com is it as complex as the secret history no but i'm kind of i'm trying to be better about like comparing things to the secret history too because like i just don't think anything within the dark academia wheelhouse is ever going to try and be i i don't think they try to be like the secret history because i think like while it's inspired by that book i feel like the genre is kind of become its own thing. Reading that made me want to also finally watch Saltburn. I talked about it a little bit too earlier and I was like talking about it earlier and reading If We Were Villains. I was like maybe I should finally watch this damn movie. Honestly like the whole reason I haven't watched it yet is because I've just heard so many people talk about how insane it is and I tend to get really anxious when I watch like certain movies sometimes and I just like if things are really stressful or gross or whatever like I just really struggle with it um and so I was nervous about watching Saltburn but honestly I like yeah like crazy things happen in it but I didn't think it was like oh my gosh this is like the weirdest thing I've ever seen in my life but that being said, I really, really liked it. Also, I feel like everyone is going crazy over Jacob Ellerty right now. But I have to say, Barry, I forget his last name, but I love him. He was my favorite part of Eternals. I just, oh, he was so good in that film and he's so good in this one. Like, I just feel like he does such a good job at playing these characters that are kind of loathsome, but you also like are so what's the word i'm looking for like transfixed by them anyways back to if we were villains i am just having fun reading it honestly i would compare it instead of comparing it to the secret history but actually i think a better comparison would be like olive blake like the atlas six but without magic in the sense that people are just like super deliciously pretentious but it's also still like compulsively readable. I feel like stories like Saltburn and If We Were Villains and The Secret History all kind of also like they need another genre because Dark Academia is fun because it's all set around academia but I feel like sometimes I want that same sort of story but I don't want it set in academia and like what would that be called? So I am going to head to bed and spend time with my family tomorrow and I'll probably come back and update you um, when everyone's napping and I'm reading a bit more of my book. So it is the next day. It is Christmas and spent 
this morning just like doing family things presents all that kind of stuff but last night and a little bit this morning I finished pretty much half of my bag I still have to do like this side of the half the like little swoopy bit but I finished this half feeling very proud of myself um if you want to keep up with that i'll probably document more of it over on my instagram and then i am a bit further along into act two of if we were villains and i am liking it but i'm not loving it um so basically the premise is that we have this group of people who are all at this shakespeare conservatory i think i mentioned that before and something happens i'm assuming one of them is murdered it's usually how these stories go and we are being told this story by our main character Oliver who has uh who's coming out of jail after 10 years in prison I assume for this murder telling the story to this detective who is retiring and so the first act is really like them in their fourth year at this conservatory and just watching sort of their relationship become more and more tense because of their competitiveness and like other relationship stuff happening and i really liked that bit it's like i i liked i i like the parts where they're at school there is like the coolest performance of macbeth ever in this book like i would do anything to see a like outdoor performance of macbeth it'd be so cool like in a forest running through of Macbeth, of, an, of uh, A Midsummer's Night Dream, I, like either of those. That'd be so cool. Anyways, so I loved that and I, I do really like those performance bits. I'm kind of just confused right now because we've come back to 10 years in the future after everything happens and I feel like I just, I think because I'm so in the dark, I just like don't really care about what's happening in the present day. So that's kind of what I'm struggling with right now. And I will also say that I'm having a hard time like keeping some of the characters straight. Like I just feel like there's quite a few of them and not enough of them feel strong enough. Like there's a few that do, but then there's others that just sort of feel like they're just kind of there. And then I'm like, wait, who are you? I am having fun with it. It's a fun, good time. I am hoping to maybe finish that tonight. We'll see. I did start playing Palia today. I got my niece to also download it with me and I am really liking it so far. It's free in case you don't know. Um, it is a cozy MMO. So think like World of Warcraft, but like no Warcraft. Uh, so you're basically like farming, mining, uh, meeting other characters, creating your little like plot of land, but it's also like an open world. Like you can meet other players and things. And I just, I literally just started it. So I've, I'm probably like an hour or two into it right now. I created my character, all of that, but it's really fun. And like, I'm super interested just to see like, as I get more into the world, how I feel about it. There are like a few glitches that I'm noticing playing it where like there was one point I was literally like climbing and all of a sudden I was just like walking on air or I'll like turn around and like there'll be nothing but like a green screen behind me so I don't love that so much and it's a little bit frustrating um but it is a brand new game and it's also like one where it's an MMO so I, I recognize that it's a lot that they have to support within this game and it's pretty popular so um, I'm trying not to fault them too much for that or be like too harsh but yeah that is sort of where I'm at with that but I am really enjoying it and I'm super super intrigued to see just like how it continues to evolve and especially the community aspect of it so really enjoying that I feel like I'm doing lots of like just cozy fun activities this vlog which I'm happy about so I think I'm going to read a bit more of If We Were Villains because I am hoping to try and finish this today um, or at least get quite a bit further along. So I'm going to read more of this um, and have Christmas dinner and just chill. Oh, also, if you would like to be my friend in Palia, is it Palia or Palia? If you'd like to be my friend in the game, my name is Clover Kane. I tend to name all of my characters Clover for some reason and then I was listening to Ethel Kane. So I named my character Clover Kane. So, yeah. <laughs>
Collect 150. Damn. <laughs> I paid 100. <laughs> 100. Oh my 60. god. You can buy me an Oreo. Railroad, that's great. <laughs> So it's the next day and I thought I'd end this vlog kind of where I started it on a walk outside. It's again so nice outside. Feels actually very worrisome how nice it is outside. Anyways, finished If We Are Villains last night and honestly the main emotion I felt was annoyed if I'm being so honest. Ugh, okay, here's the thing. I think I was trying really hard to like convince myself to just have fun and turn my brain off and all of that with it with which i think i would have been able to do had the like last like one fourth of the book been good but it wasn't and i'm not gonna spoil it but i just like what they decided to do at the end to me just felt so nonsensical <laughs> it felt kind of cheap it felt unearned like it just didn't f i mean it, it, in some ways it like parts of it did feel like oh yeah that makes sense um and like that's a good sort of revelation but other things i'm like but why like that doesn't make any sense or you could have done xyz and like none of this would have been an issue and and i just think that if you are going to be like a blatant ripoff of another book then like you should at least be good i think for me that's the thing about dark academia is that there are dark academia books that i know have been inspired by a secret history and i'm sorry i keep bringing that book up but it's hard not to when it comes to this book or dark academia but there are lots of dark academia books that have been inspired by that one but that don't feel like like total ripoffs of them and i think the main thing that like kind of frustrates me is that reading about like the passion of these actors for Shakespeare just never felt real. It never felt authentic. Like, I think the thing that I loved so much, well, one of the things that I loved so much about The Secret History is their all-consuming obsession with the classics. And it just felt, it felt so real. Like, it felt heady and like you as the reader felt like you were getting lost in it at the same time as these characters were getting lost in it. And I just never felt that with this book. They just really only ever felt like actors who were doing Shakespeare who were passionate about Shakespeare sure but like it never really felt more than that even though I think the author wanted it to feel like more than that overall I just I thought it was fine I, like it was fun at times and I love like I would love to have it be adapted but other than that I just I don't know I thought it was fine just so sad because the two books in this vlog are like two really hyped up I feel like books and I didn't like either so my bad also I let myself read the Goodreads reviews last night and I saw one person refer to it as um the secret history meets glee I had not been able to stop thinking about that that is actually so true that's like exactly how I feel about it anyways I am going to go make lunch edit this vlog and I'm excited to share it with you guys and hear your thoughts on these books if you've read them. Let me know what you think I should read because I still want books that feel like both of these. I just want them to be good. Maybe I should do like a whole salt burn video or something and I'll read like Bride's Head Revisited and Eileen. I'm trying to think of like other books that sort of give the salt burn vibe but let me know in the comments and I will see you all next time. Bye!